go out. It'll be all over before we get there. Yeah, no, we can stop. Tell us, stop messing me about. That's cutting into my drinking time. Can't we just leave, huh? I will. I've just left her. You know, she's paying up because I'm going out. Well, maybe she's lonely. Couldn't you get a ferret sitter? Oh, no, she's a one-man ferret. Right. We're off. They'll have to stay loose. There's a possibility we could all be locked in here forever. Now, give it a good go. Come here. Come. <laughs> <laughs> we can't leave it like this. Stella's loose. Oh. Just about giving you up. You're not leaving already. It's just off in search of a bit of company. I can't be short of company at a stag night. Not now you're here. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh, glad we came late. How long have you all been drinking? You know how time flies when you're busy. Where did I learn to drink like that? It's a lifetime in the Metropolitan Police, lad. It's something you picked up as you went along. Well, you seem to have picked it up very well. Before I became Sergeant Trulo, CID, I had to pass rigorous tests in advanced drinking. <laughs> Besides which, of course, I had an additional incentive. The former Mrs. Trulo always looked better under the influence of alcohol. <laughs> The former Mrs. Krulov. How long were they married? 37 years. Oh, well, if you're not going to give the thing a fair chance. <laughs> it was. After 37 years. It was a painful time. I don't like to speak about it. Marriage was all right at first. I still treasure the memory of those first few, um, minutes. <laughs> that doesn't like to speak about it. According to the last look on his feet, they did nothing but speak about it all night. I wouldn't say all night. The members of the public have this tendency to exaggerate. But well, he said you've been scaring the groom half to death with your horror stories of wedlock. I was just giving him the benefit of my experience. In years to come, he'll be more than grateful. <laughs> How come thou got invited any road? Because they needed someone responsible to keep an eye on the groom. And who more responsible than the former Detective Sergeant Herbert Trulove, truly of the yard? Well, if you're supposed to be keeping an eye on the groom, where is he? He's fine. Enjoying his last few quiet moments before the fray. You'll have to excuse me. I, I do get sentimental on these occasions. Of course, I could be lying. A copper always has to bear that possibility in mind. That's better. Well, you look lovely. Of course, you could be biased, Auntie Edie. She's going to look lovely. <laughs> Nervous, but lovely. 
I hope she enjoys it as much as I enjoyed my wedding day. Drink your sherry. <laughs> Got butterflies. Oh, get her a drink, someone. I think you want to. Well, I don't see why not. The man will be. Any excuse. Oh, my Ronald's all right. Well, why shouldn't he be? He doesn't normally drink a lot. It's surprising what they can do when they put their minds to it. It's like riding a bicycle. They fall down a few times while they're learning, but they soon get the hang of it. Some of them take to worse things than drink. <laughs> At least yours doesn't have a hangover in the morning. <laughs> They're pathetic when they have a hangover. You'd think they were at death's door. They're not good at pain. Well, I always think that it's one of our duties to make sure that they become accustomed to it. <laughs> Mother, I don't cause my Barry any pain. Well, it's time you started. <laughs> you haven't got him out straight by now. When will you? He's marriage that bad. Oh, love, it's fine. Once you get past the excitable bits. I had very little trouble doing that. Marriage is lovely, Millie. I hope I never get past the excitable bits. <laughs> Will you please bring your cherry? I just hope my Ronald's OK. It's his last night of freedom. You've got to give him a break. You'll have the rest of your life for getting your own back. He's in good company. He's with Mr. True Love. He used to be a policeman. And with my Barry as his best man, he's not going to come to much harm. No, the former Mrs. True Love had all the arrogance of an attractive woman. Just a pity she didn't have the face and figure to go with it. <laughs> Between perms, he used to look a lot like Max Wall. Oh, I used to like Max Wall. Not to wake up with. <laughs> Didn't like him that much. I hope Stella's all right. You want a drink and forget. They've closed the bar. Oh. Whose drink is that? Well, judging by its rather pink and delicate complexion, I'd say it belongs to the best man. Barry. Mm. Is he going to finish it? Not for a while, I shouldn't think. <laughs> Glenda's going to be really pleased that you've got Barry in that condition. I didn't get him in that condition. I just told him a few stories of marriage, and suddenly they seemed inclined to drink rather more than was good for them. I thought Foggy was coming. Foggy? Dewhurst. Tall street with a walking stick. A bit slow with a penny, but quick with his war stories. Oh, him. Well, he was here. I I'm sure he was here. Yes, I thought I'd seen him. <laughs> I've told you what time to fetch the flowers. Yes, you've told me 14 times. Yes, and you've just been as vague every time. You know, I've noticed that you take no notice of a sentence unless it's got the word motor in it. <laughs> Have you cleaned your best shoes? Yes. It's the bride that's supposed to look lovely, not me. Well, you're the only relative she's got. And I am going to get you done up if it kills me. It's the least we can do. Now what? Hello? Who is it? It's Mr. True Love. Well, what does he want? He wants some transport. At this hour? What's Barry doing? I don't think you want to know what Barry's doing. <laughs> not about being married, he looks ready for being buried. What is the difference? You can't take him home in this condition. I can take care of him. Say somewhere like you're about his spare bedroom. <laughs> We'd better get them back to my place and sober them up. Come on. Here, listen. We better go and get Foggy Spark out. We we'll take four of us. Do you carry her off? I can't remember. You can't remember what? I've never seen Foggy in this condition. 
Enjoy a good wedding. That's all I've noticed. The secret is to make sure it's somebody else's. <laughs> For 37 years you were married. You must miss each other a bit. Oh, we have missed each other. With half bricks, frying pans, empty bottles. <laughs> oh, keep the voice down. That'd be terrifying, this lad. Oh, he's not listening. <laughs> One thing for sure, Foggy's not listening. And he's not talking either. I love listening to Foggy when he's not talking. <laughs> I take my hat off to him. He has the admiration of truly of the yard. What for? For his native wit and cunning. I believe anybody who avoids wedlock all his life is deserving of the highest respect. Oh, I found wedlock very confusing. Your marriage can't have been all that bad. Not at first. It was fine while they were taking the photographs. <laughs> it was only after that it was all downhill. <laughs> you think I can get some sleep now? Well, there's nothing stopping you. Get into bed. You're going to make notes all night. Why are you so argumentative? I only asked. It's because you're wearing a suit tomorrow, isn't it? You're always nervous the night before. I shan't be able to breathe. They never fit. Well, that's because you're so used to those baggy overalls. I don't know what you want with an old shed when you've all that space in your overalls. Serves you right if I turn purple. You'd better not. It'll clash with my outfit. <laughs> I'll go and see what it is. I've lost my Barry. You haven't lost him. It's as if he just disappeared between the pub and home. I've never believed in flying saucers, but... Flying saucers? Have you seen him? Has he been tampered with? Well, you should say that. <laughs> He's fine. Well, nearly fine. Oh, will he still recognise me? Give him time. <laughs> something scandalous. Keep your voices down. My Barry's had an encounter. <laughs> Barry's fine. He's perfectly safe at Norman Clegg. What's he doing at Norman Clegg's at this hour? He's doing what he should be doing. He's best man. He's looking after the groom. I knew it. I had this premonition. The groom's had an encounter. Only with a drinker outside his class. He's just a bit under the weather. Well, it'd better be fine and sunny by morning. <laughs> what time is it? I don't know. I think I died during the night. I know he died. That Mr. Trulove. Did you hear his awful marriage stories, eh? Barry, you don't think it's possible I could be making a terrible mistake, do you? I wish you wouldn't talk at me, Ronnie. Every word's coming in like a half brick. <laughs> Get it out of you, lads. Don't be standing by all limp on your wedding morn. There'll be plenty of time for that later. He's still fast asleep. In case it's his turn to buy around. Well, there's plenty of time before the wedding. Let him sleep at home. Hey up, Ronnie. <laughs> this is the day, lad. Do you think that's ready for it? I don't know, Mr. Simonite. You hear such terrible stories, don't you? Oh, they're not all that bad. Barry will tell you that. Barry? Who's Barry? <laughs> you. Oh, yeah.
It's your house. Oh, I knew I'd seen it somewhere before. That's a good sign. I'm beginning to remember things. No, no, no. no, no. <laughs> You're supposed to be always by my side. No, that's the little woman. Always by your side. On your back, up your nose. <laughs> <laughs> Barry will be back for the wedding. I'm not sure I will. I don't know whether I can go through with it. There's nothing to it. Well, how long did yours last? Best part of a fortnight. <laughs> not all bad. Barry has a good marriage. Take no notice of Mr. True Love. Watch Barry. Call me sentimental, but such scenes do remind me of my own happy home life. <laughs> Maybe he'd have done better if we'd let him go in the wrong house. Uh, did you say that was a good marriage? Well, they don't come much better than Glenda and Barry. Ronnie, home. Couldn't we go for a ride or something? I mean, it's such a lovely morning. Nature lover, come on, Ronnie, get an hour's sleep before you have to get ready. Hi. Millions of people will tell you how good it is to be married. Of course, they could be lying. Oh. <laughs> is she attractive, lad, the bride? Oh, she is. She's attractive. Yes, uh, I don't know how they do it. All the while you're engaged, right up to the altar. They're attractive. Then, next morning, you look at them over the breakfast table and it's happened. What's happened? Ugly. <laughs> Overnight, they've gone ugly. Take no notice, Ronnie. He's inclined to exaggerate. Like they do when they give evidence. The poetic imagination is the policeman's greatest gift. <laughs> What's happened to Mr. Jewhurst? <laughs> How can she recognise him from that angle? <laughs> she never forgets a boot. I'd know Mr. Dewhurst anywhere. Oh, it's always a pleasure to deliver to Mr. Dewhurst. He's such a gentleman. Tells such lovely war stories. <laughs> you can relax, madam. He's merely sleeping it off. Oh, I can't tell you what a relief that is. <laughs> What an excitable milkman. You no wonder it's got lumps in it on the second day. <laughs> the crew's just escaped on the milk float. That's real panic escaping on a milk float. Hey! Stop it! He's stolen my milk float! Relax. We've got the message. We'll get it back for you. How far can he get in a vehicle like that? You can't go racing after a milk float with Mr. Dewar sleeping in back. Is there an alternative? It's no way to treat a war hero. I'll deliver Mr. Dewhurst. It's always a pleasure to be of service to Mr. Dewhurst. <laughs> it <you> means it. <laughs> This beggar's tricky. He can prove to be the kind that deserves to be married. I'm oh, scared him to death with all your marriage stories. I frightened the life out of me, and I'd marry anybody. <laughs> and his sister live in this street. I bet that's where he's gone, his sister's. <laughs> getting home made and not shop bought so you can always tell a good wedding if things are all made everybody's serious and getting off to a good start do you think they'll be happy 
Oh, I think so. Most people like savoury pasties. <laughs> Be happy in their marriage. Were you? Well, when you look back, actually, I was happier than I realised at the time. You too. <laughs> Funny where it goes, isn't it? Yeah. You always think you've got forever. <laughs> We're not open! What does he want? He wants to keep his sticky fingers off my glass door. <laughs> what do you want? Advice. Advice? You've left it a bit late for that. Oh, they smell good. You'll get some at the wedding later. <laughs> what sort of advice? I don't know what to buy for a wedding present. You're leaving it a bit late, aren't you? I've not left it late. I started early. I've been for weeks not knowing what to buy for <laughs> <laughs> can flee from Truly of the Yard. Well, Mrs. Truly did. <laughs> I hope she sends him first class. As long as she doesn't try to shove him through the letterbox. I had a bet with myself. Did you win? <laughs> we are open. Who's open this time of the morning? I haven't got tidied up yet. Your shop door's open. Well, I am entitled to go in and out even outside business hours. You can see it says closed on that door. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you were open. I've never known you turn down a customer. Oh, I'm not the grasping old woman I've got the reputation of being. Since when? There are other <laughs> things in life besides buying and selling. Since when? <laughs> I can't stand here talking. I've got to go and buy a wedding present. You want to be glad you are stood here talking. Why? Because while you've been talking, I've opened the shop. It happens to be the day I open early. Come in. Of course, the tricky swine could have doubled back. Well, I think that's what I've done in that Land Rover. I've doubled me back. With me, it's me elbow. Me drinking elbow. Oh, come on. Why don't we give it up? What about that poor child waiting at the altar? Little heart all a fluttered at the thought of starting a mortgage. Must need a pretty bath. I wouldn't go that far. Oh, he's going that far and fast. I'll get him. I was truly of the yard. I always get my man. I thought that were the Mounties. Well, where do you think they picked it up? There we go. We'll head him off. Given up. He knows I would have followed him to the ends of the earth. What, in Wesley's Land Rover? <laughs> Trouble with speech. Well, don't start speeching him any more married horror stories. Trouble with that is, they're the only kind I know. Just keep the gob shut. He has the same silvery tongue as the former Mrs. True Love. <laughs> Finally ready for a bit of elementary wedlock, aren't we? <laughs> what can I do with that for? Well, it was the best I could think of, on the spur of the moment, like. Well, it's not bad. Oh, for the spur of the moment. 
Quite tricky. Hope he feels like I do, too excited to sleep. I'll try to be a good wife to him. I wonder what he's doing right this moment. I wonder if you're awake yet, Ronnie. I wonder what you're thinking right now. I'm not going! That's going! We didn't do all this digging for now. I'm just glad he didn't chain himself to traffic lights. I plead guilty. What a state to be in. He did a really good job on him last night. I never made this fuss of mine. I went quietly. There's a sort of merciful numbness comes over me towards the end. In my case, both ends. I was only a young constable at the time. I thought, well, it can't be worse than arresting violent criminals. Just shows how wrong you can get. Oh. I'm only kidding, lad. Marriage is what you make of it. I know. I heard what you made of it. Get on! <laughs> what was she really like, your Mabel? A Rottweiler in many ways. I always supported the idea that they should be muzzled. <laughs> Here we go. Careful now. Come on, now, turn me head. Well, that's it then. A few more minutes, the end of the shift. Oh, it's been a quiet night. You're grateful for quiet nights, but it's really boring. One of the great assets of this area. Boring? You get your 25 years in a really solidly boring area, and you've had a decent career. <laughs> oh, I agree. Fancy being in one of them hooligan areas where you're able to get duffed up every night. You get enough of that at home. <laughs> to bake a Charlie dog. No. Typical. Nothing happens all night and then ten minutes before you're due to go home. Baker, Charlie dog. Offer? HS Control to Baker, Charlie dog. Highways Department reports the theft of a giveaway sign from a <laughs> Good grief. I know they'll pinch everything that's loose, but the Lord help us if they've started pinching things that fasten in the ground. <laughs> Let's go on before some idiot gets us involved with a giveaway sign. this with me. I can handle policemen. In two minutes they'll be asking for autographs. <laughs> now then, constables, it's your lucky day. How often do you meet truly of the yard? <laughs> that certainly made a big impression there. They've been up all night. I think they're in a bad mood. That's one hell of a wing mirror. Why didn't you put it somewhere safe? I 
did. I remember putting it somewhere safe. Where? I can't remember. Oh, that really sounds safe. Well, it's not under here. Well, it's not in here. Are you sure you searched every pocket? Yes, every pocket. What are you going to tell the groom? Can't you tell him? I'm far too unwell for any complicated lying. <laughs> well, well, well. A man who carries his own. Now there's a novelty. I need to speak to someone of senior rank. I can explain. Don't. Every time you open your mouth, we get further in it. Can I go now? We're going to miss a wedding. Yeah? I'm told your father had the same problem. Gee, gee. A word in your ear, Constable. From an ex-colleague. You'll have heard of Truly of the Yard. No. I called the Hackney serial killer. I thought that was Superintendent Ross. No, he wasn't the Hackney serial killer. The Hackney serial killer was a fellow named Beryl. No wonder he went around killing people if his parents called him Beryl. B e -E -R -R -I -L. Um, I want to be arrested. No problem, sir. You just have been. Oh, can I have a long sentence? How about... You do not have to say anything, but it may harm your defence if you do not mention, when questioned, something which you later rely on in court. And anything you do say may be given in evidence. That long enough for you? Oh, I plead guilty. He's not guilty. He's just a little nervous. We're on our way to a wedding. I'm not. No, no, I'm not. I'm the head of an international gang of giveaway sign thieves. I sell them abroad to poor countries who can't afford their own giveaway signs. Don't believe him. He's an idiot. And what are you? Look, we're together. When you've seen just about everything, isn't there anything you like? Nothing that really says that's it. You could get you a parrot. <laughs> What exactly did you have in mind, if it's not too optimistic a question? I haven't really decided. I sort of came with an open mind. Open? <laughs> Never seen one as open. What would you buy for a wedding present? Something expensive. <laughs> I don't think I can go as far as expensive. You haven't even gone as far as cheap. <laughs> well, you've seen everything else. You'll have to have the last resort. Last resort? Yes, it's uh, something I keep for these special occasions when all else fails. Now, stay there a minute and don't touch anything. Uh. That's it? A last resort? Hmm? Why do you call it a last resort? Oh, an old lady has her reasons. I don't like it. You haven't heard the price yet? How much is it? Oh, I've forgotten. Now, the price is on the ticket in the bottom of the vase. Oh, here. You've got a longer reach than me. See what it says on the ticket in the bottom. I can't feel anything. It certainly looks that way, judging by your expression. <laughs> my hand's fast. Yes, that kind of vase does that sometimes. <laughs> Can you give it a pull? Oh, no, no, no. You could hurt yourself. No, wait till you get home and uh, put some butter around it. You're going to let me take it home? Absolutely, lad. I'm just glad you finally found something. <laughs> oh, look. The price is on the bottom, after all. Now, there we are, then. No problem. Another satisfied customer. Oh. <laughs> Do you think we ought to be leaving a bridegroom in a police station on his wedding day? Let them keep him for a couple of hours. At least we know where he is. I'm hungry. Oh, that makes a change. He's right. We ought to go and get a bit of breakfast. And possibly a nap. And come back for the groom. He will have sobered up enough to, to regain sufficient natural stupidity to go through with it. He makes it sound so romantic. <laughs> Try and think, Barry. Try and think what you did with the ring. Oh, I don't think my head's working too well. What's the last thing you remember doing with it? What do you do with a head? It just goes where you go. The ring, Barry. It's all a blank. I remember... Yes? I remember feeling ill. 
You really had a good time, didn't you, Barry? I remember Mr. Dewar saying how this tribe in the jungle had a cure for feeling ill. Did it work? I don't know. We couldn't get any alligator liver extract. <laughs> That's it. That's where the ring is. In an alligator? I gave it to Mr. Dewhurst. <sighs> Mr. Dewhurst suggested that I give it to somebody responsible for safekeeping. I think Mr. Dewhurst was very wise. Well, you better get dressed and go and fetch it. Yeah, I, I, I will. I will. And maybe at home, Mr. Dewhurst will have some alligator liver extract. <laughs> You'll be here on the wedding morning. I have to have a quick tinker to calm my nerves. What are you really nervous about? I hate getting dressed up. Is everything all right? Yes, everything's fine. Of course, he could be lying. <laughs> Where's the groom? Oh, he's in jail. I see what you mean about everything being all right. <laughs> What's he doing in jail? They're just looking after him until he sobers up. Don't worry, we'll get him there on time. In what condition? Oh, well, if there's going to be picky. Oh. Oh, Why don't you wear gloves, Smiler, like anybody else? It's a wedding present. Does that come with the vase? <laughs> I can't get my hand out. Foggy has a safe trouble in the pub. <laughs> Could this dribble a drop of oil around the inside, Wesley? I've had strict instructions not to mess with oil. Not this morning. If I don't keep my hands clean today, He'll kill me. No. I can't find Mr. Dewhurst. Not everybody would regard that as a problem, Barry. <laughs> but he's got the wedding ring. He took it off me last night for safekeeping. Oh, bad move, Barry. Ain't foggy at all. I've just been there. There's no one there. Oh, we entrusted him to the post lady. Maybe she's not delivered him yet. Maybe we should have registered him. <laughs> she's probably giving him a cup of tea. He'll be at the post lady's house. We'll come with you, Barry. You'd better come inside. Why didn't you go to the hairdressers? Because I could do my own. And what makes you think I dare sit under a dryer at the hairdressers? That'd be like giving you permission to go out and play. <laughs> I don't know what you mean. And who are you to suddenly start criticising people's hair? Suddenly I'm living with Videl Sassoon. <laughs> it's just that I would have paid for you to go to the hairdressers. Oh, I know. You'd pay for me to go to Australia if I wanted. <laughs> It'd have to be economy. <laughs> Why did he give him to the post lady? Well, she just grabbed him like it was a prize in the lottery. She's a fan of his. She even likes his war stories. There's nobody in there. <laughs> Where did he put the alleged ring? In his purse. We'll be safe there. Safe as out. <laughs> if you're looking for the post lady, she's not in. She drove off in a car. Do you happen to know where? No idea, and I'm sure it's not my business. Although, I can tell you, she had a strange man in that car, and he seemed to be asleep. And you've no idea where they've gone? If you ask me, they're up to no good. It's very unsettling seeing a post lady singing cheerfully. <laughs> She's gone off with him in the car. That means we've got no ring. Don't worry, lad. We've got no groom either. Come on! With the ring? In his purse. Where have they gone? Nobody knows. How do you mean, nobody knows? You make it sound as if it's been snatched by the post lady from hell. Well, I don't know how far a route goes. <laughs> I just know that she's not at home, he's not at home, and they've gone off together somewhere. Well, maybe they're on the way here to bring the ring. They would have been here by now. Well, you're just going to have to get another ring. What? Oh. 
This is the last time I'm going to be best man. It stresses people up. <laughs> Does the think you're trying to run away again? I should think there's every chance. What's the nervous on that wedding day? Well, I was more numb than nervous. <laughs> well, here he is then. Sober and safe and sound. For how long? Oh, uh, I think everything's under control. How can I be sure? An old policeman's instincts tells me that he won't be running far. <laughs> Truly in the yard, I'll get him to the altar. Ah, uh, well, don't lose the key, otherwise it's going to get a bit crowded on his honeymoon. Well, mine was crowded, but that was just the two of us. <laughs> oh, oh, no. What's wrong with it now? It's... It, 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 it. a good bit of grease, is that? Here. You can wash it at home. Hey, it's all right for you. You can wipe your hands down your overalls. <laughs> Takes years of practice. You do it right, you finish up waterproof. <laughs> Where are we going? We're going to show you the benefits of marriage compared to being a bachelor. But it were you that said marriage were horrible. It's not always horrible. Only when the wife's there. <laughs> Give us your time. What for? Questions, questions. You can't go into marriage with that attitude. <laughs> what are you doing with him on your arm? It's an old wedding custom. We think it's Roman in origin. Did the Romans have ties? They had Tiberius. <laughs> well, I've never heard of it. Well, whose fault is that? I keep on offering to show you some of these old wedding customs. <laughs> What's it supposed to be an aid of, this custom? We think it's just symbolic. Doesn't really make what you'd call um, sense. Oh, a lot like you lot. <laughs> yeah, where were you taking him? Didn't it time he would get him ready for church? I don't want him. <laughs> <laughs> We'll get him there on time. It's a funny custom. All right, lass, we'll skip it till we get wed. We'll skip lots of things and get him wed's one of the first of them. Nor a batting. That's not suggesting we live together outside of wedlock. Oh, take him inside. He's not fit to be let out. <laughs> right, then. Are you ready for your unveiling? Oh, I can't wait. When we take this blindfold off, I want you to have a good look round. What? You'll see. <laughs> what am I supposed to be looking at? What you're looking at, lad, is the result of living alone. What you see here are the perils of being a bachelor. Do you really want to live like this? Wouldn't you really rather have a woman's touch? What's wrong with living like this? You hate it. You hate living like this. Tell him you hate living like this. I do. I hate living like this. I do. I want a woman on the home. I would do it. And this is how you really live. You promised me you haven't just dressed it like this to influence me. No, on account of the wedding, I tidied the place up. <laughs> he lives like this. All the time, he lives like this. You lucky devil. Oh, <laughs> Exactly the same to me. Well, don't lose this one. I didn't lose the other one. I gave it to Mr. Dewhurst for safekeeping. Well, don't give this to anyone. You keep it with you at all times till the wedding. I will. I will. You're sure they don't know who you are? I even gave him a false name. <laughs> That's clever, Barry. We don't want anybody to know you've had to buy another ring. <laughs> Just 
shows, you never can tell. They both look as if butter wouldn't melt. And they've been living together for years. It's about time they got round to a wedding ring. Mm, he looks terrible. I feel terrible. If she loves you, she'll not notice. Well, there's this one. It, uh, <laughs> smells a bit musty. Oh. It might blow off in the fresh air. Why can't he wear his own suit? You're going to trust him to go home? <laughs> you do not let a prisoner go wandering off on his own. You stay with him until you've safely delivered him to the jailer. <sighs> <laughs> now look what you've done. You're upsetting him again. I admit I've been exaggerating. <laughs> I intend to mend that. What I'm going to do, lad, is I'm going to ring up the former Mrs. True Love right now and talk to her. And you realise that our relationship maybe isn't as bad as I've been painting it. <laughs> That's going to ring the former Mrs. True Love. We may be divorced, but we still speak to each other. <laughs> it's been in the old wardrobe for 25 years, but uh, it'll be better in the fresh air. It's better, isn't it? Eh? Better. Yeah, yeah, you're looking good, kid. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Mabel, it's Herbert. Your former husband. <laughs> yes, that Herbert. If I'm ringing you at a bad time, Mabel, I'm sorry. <laughs> May I say that you're looking lovelier than ever. <laughs> uh, thank you for the letter. He seems a better class of solicitor. <laughs> that was the former Mrs. Trulove. <laughs> As you can see, we still converse freely. She sends her love and best wishes for the future. Is there going to be any future? What are we going to do now? Well, there's only one thing we can do. We've got to face him with the bride. Let him tell her himself that he's backing out. Oh, I couldn't do that. Why not? Well, it's unlucky to see the bride on the day of the wedding. <laughs> A little bit superstitious, are we, lad? Well, what's wrong with that? Nothing, nothing. I'm a little bit that way myself. I've always thought it was supernatural aid that helped me catch the hackney killer. <laughs> Remind me to tell you about it sometime. So, little superstitious person, <laughs> what if we brought you a gypsy to tell your fortune? What if the gypsy was able to put your mind at rest about your future? Guardian of the secrets. You're looking at me in that forward manner with those big eyes. <laughs> What's up with you? You look as though you've seen a ghost. I think I'm maybe half. Have you ever heard of a Princess Sheba, keeper of the secrets? Have you ever heard of seeking psychiatric help? <laughs> I'll put this with the rest of the presents. It was very nice of Smiler. You know, he's been with your father. Why should he have been with my father? I don't know. But I bet he has. <laughs> it won't be long now. I wonder what my Ronald's doing. I see. I see many children. Oh, 
we don't want any children. <laughs> I see many children living next door to you in the future. <laughs> well, they're not ours, then? Well, not necessarily. I see a little cottage. With roses round the door. Well, we don't want a big garden. We've got time to do a big garden. Hell, don't be so pity. Maybe the gypsy will see some old chap coming in twice a week to do the garden. I do. I do. I see this old chap coming in twice a week to do the garden. Can we afford a gardener? <laughs> Maybe he's cheap. I expect he does it mainly for the love of the game. He does. He does. He comes in twice a week, mainly for the love of the game. But suppose he has an accident while he's on the premises. Are we be responsible? Perhaps the gypsy can see what will happen if you don't get married. I can. The gypsy can see what will happen if you don't get married. Can you really say things like that? These are powers given only to a few. I see you becoming entangled with another woman. Divorced, lots of children, and an even bigger garden. Divorced? <laughs> well, how old is she? It's difficult to tell through the mists which cover the future, but I'd say approximately 43. 43? But what's she look like? Not as attractive as we younger persons. <laughs> And he's wearing my suit. Oh, expensive game this getting married. Here, keep the change. <laughs> what are you all staring at? Is this suit all right? It's terrific. They always stare at the groom until the bride arrives. Oh, but Barry. Hello. Barry, have you got the ring? Of course it's got the ring. Oh. Hello. Whoever made his wedding suit? I don't know, but his smell must be. She'll smarten him up once he's married. <laughs> I was only getting my fortune told from Prince Ashiba. I'll tell your fortune. Don't ever hesitate. Ask me. I'll tell your fortune. It's fantastic. Well, I can't help it. I didn't have time to go home and get changed.
It's foggy. Oh. <laughs> He's in Blackpool with the post lady. <laughs> He's, he's sobered up. He's remembered the ring. <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> I've got the ring, he said. Yes. And she said, Oh, Mr. Dewhurst, I thought you'd never ask. <laughs> A new series of Last of the Summer Wine begins next Sunday here on BBC One at 6.45. stories, don't you? Ah, oh, they're not all that bad. Barry will tell you that. Barry? Who's Barry? <laughs> you! Oh, yeah. I'm beginning to remember things. Not no, that. No, no, no. <laughs> Don't leave me, Barry. You're supposed to be always by my side. No, that's the little woman. Always by your side. On your back, up your nose. <laughs> <laughs> Barry will be back for the wedding. I'm not sure I will. I don't know whether I can go through with it. Oh. There's nothing to it. Well, how long did yours last? Best part of a fortnight. <laughs> Come on, now, turn me head. <laughs> well, that's it then. A few more minutes, the end of the shift. Ah, it's been a quiet night. You're grateful for quiet nights, but it's really boring. One well, of the great assets of this area. Boring? You get your 25 years in a really solidly boring area, and you've had a decent career. <laughs> oh, I agree. Fancy being in one of them hooligan areas where you're able to get duffed up every night. You get enough of that at home. <laughs> just control to bake a Charlie dog. No. Typical. Nothing happens all night and then ten minutes before you're due to go home. Baker, Charlie dog. Of her? HS control to bake a Charlie dog. Highways department reports the theft of a giveaway sign from a just... <laughs> Good grief. I know they'll pinch everything that's loose, but the Lord help us if they've started pinching things that fasten in the ground. <laughs> Let's go on before some idiot gets us involved with a giveaway sign. <laughs> Simonite. You hear such terrible stories, don't you? Ah, oh, they're not all that bad. Barry will tell you that. Barry? Who's Barry? <laughs> you! Oh, yeah. <laughs>
Oh, Barry, it's your house. Oh, <laughs> I knew I'd seen it somewhere before. That's a good sign. I'm beginning to remember things. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> Don't leave me, Barry. You're supposed to be always by my side. No, that's the little woman. Always by your side. On your back, up your nose. <laughs> <laughs> Barry will be back for the wedding. I'm not sure I will. I don't know whether I can go through with it. There's nothing to it. Well, how long did yours last? Best part of the four. <laughs> Call me sentimental, but such scenes do remind me of my own happy home life. <laughs> Maybe he'd have done better if we'd let him go in the wrong house. Uh, did you say that was a good marriage? Well, they don't come much better than Glenda and Barry. Home. Couldn't we go for a ride or something? I mean, it's such a lovely morning. Nature lover, come on, Ronnie. Get an hour's sleep before you have to get ready. Hi. Millions of people will tell you how good it is to be married. Of course, they could be lying. Oh. <laughs> is she attractive, lad, the bride? Oh, she is. She's attractive. Yes, uh, I don't know how they do it. All the while you're engaged, right up to the altar. They're attractive. Then, next morning, you look at them over the breakfast table and it's happened. What's happened? Ugly. <laughs> Overnight, they've gone ugly. Take no notice, Ronnie. He's inclined to exaggerate. Like they do when they give evidence. The poetic imagination is the policeman's greatest gift. <laughs> We go for a ride or something. I mean, it's such a lovely morning. Nature lover, come on, Ronnie. Get an hour's sleep before you have to get ready. Hi. Millions of people will tell you how good it is to be married. Of course, they could be lying. Oh. <laughs> is she attractive, lad, the bride? Oh, she is. She's attractive. Yes, uh, I don't know how they do it. All the while you're engaged, right up to the altar, they're attractive. Then? Next morning, you look at them over the breakfast table and it's happened. What's happened? Ugly. <laughs> Overnight, they've gone ugly. Take no notice, Ronnie. He's inclined to exaggerate. Like they do when they give evidence. The poetic imagination is the policeman's greatest gift. <laughs> What's happened to Mr. Jewurst? <laughs> How can she recognise him from that angle? <laughs> she never forgets a boot. I'd know Mr. Dewhurst anywhere. Oh, it's always a pleasure to deliver to Mr. Dewhurst. He's such a gentleman. Tells such lovely war stories. <laughs> you can relax, madam. He's me. <laughs> Give me the hand, you lads. Don't be standing by all limp on your wedding morn. There'll be plenty of time for that later. <laughs> <laughs> He's still fast asleep. In case it's his turn to buy a round. Well, there's plenty of time before the wedding. Let him sleep at home. Hey up, Ronnie. <laughs> this is the day, lad. Do you think that's ready for it? I don't know, Mr. Simonite. You hear such terrible stories, don't you? Ah, oh, they're not all that bad. Barry will tell you that. Barry. Who's Barry? <laughs> you! Oh, yeah.
your home, Barry. It's your... You can't take him home in this condition. I can take care of him. Say, somewhere like you're a fatty spare bedroom. Oh, we, we better get them back to my place and sober them up. Come on. Here, listen. We better go and get Foggy Spark out. We we'll take four of us. Do you carry her off? I can't remember. You can't remember what? I've never seen Foggy in this condition. Much easier to handle. Enjoy a good wedding. That's all I've noticed. The secret is to make sure it's somebody else's. <laughs> For 37 years you were married. You must miss each other a bit. Oh, we have missed each other. With half bricks, frying pans, empty bottles. <laughs> oh, keep the voice down. That'd be terrifying, this lad. Oh, he's not listening. Suppose he has an accident while he's on the premises. <laughs> oh, he'd be responsible. Perhaps the gypsy can see what will happen if you don't get married. I can. The gypsy can see what will happen if you don't get married. Can you really say things like that? These are powers given only to a few. I see you becoming entangled with another woman. Divorced. Lots of children. And an even bigger garden. Divorced? <laughs> well, how old is she? It's difficult to tell through the mists which cover the future, but I'd say approximately 43. 43? But what does she look like? Not as attractive as we younger persons. <laughs> wedding that's all I've noticed the secret is to make sure it's somebody else's <laughs> for 37 years you were married you must miss each other a bit oh we have missed each other with half bricks frying pans empty bottles <laughs> oh, keep the voice down that'd be terrifying this lad oh he's not listening <laughs> One thing for sure, Foggy's not listening. And he's not talking either. I love listening to Foggy when he's not talking. <laughs> I take my hat off to him. He has the admiration of truly of the yard. What for? For his native wit and cunning. I believe anybody who avoids wedlock all his life is deserving of the highest respect. Oh, I found wedlock very confusing. Your marriage can't have been all that bad. Not at first. It was fine while they were taking the photographs. <laughs> it was only after that it was all downhill. <laughs> you think I can get some sleep now? Well, there's nothing stopping you. Get into bed. I thought that was Superintendent Ross. No. He wasn't a hackney serial killer. The hackney serial killer was a fella named Beryl. No wonder he went around killing people if his parents called him Beryl. B E double R I L. Um, I want to be arrested. No problem, sir. You just have been. Oh, can I have a long sentence? 
How about... You do not have to say anything, but it may harm your defence if you do not mention, when questioned, something which you later rely on in court. And anything you do say may be given in evidence. That long enough for you? Oh, I plead guilty. He's not guilty. He's just a little nervous. We're on our way to a wedding. I'm not. No, no, I'm not. I'm the head of an international gang of giveaway sign thieves. I sell them abroad to poor countries who can't afford their own giveaway signs. Don't believe him. He's an idiot. And what are you? <laughs> We're together. Just about everything. Isn't there anything you like? Nothing that really says that's it. I could get you a parrot. Uh -oh. I haven't really decided. I sort of came with an open mind. Open? <laughs> Never seen one as open. What would you buy for a wedding present? Something expensive. <laughs> I don't think I can go as far as expensive. You haven't even gone as far as cheap. <laughs> well, you've seen everything else. You'll have to have the last resort. Last resort? Yes, it's uh, something I keep for these special occasions, when all else fails. Now, stay there a minute and don't touch anything. Uh. That's it? A last resort? Hmm? Why do you call it a last resort? Oh, an old lady has her reasons. I don't like it. You haven't heard the price yet? How much is it? Oh, I've forgotten. Now, the price is on the ticket in the bottom of the vase. Oh, here. You've got a longer reach than me. See what it says on the ticket in the bottom. I can't feel anything. It certainly looks that way, judging by your expression. <laughs> my hand's fast. Yes, that kind of vase does that sometimes. <laughs> Can you give it a pull? Oh, no, no, no. You could hurt yourself. No, wait till you get home and uh, put some butter around. You're going to let me take it home? Absolutely, lad. I'm just glad you finally found something. <laughs> oh, look. The price is on the bottom, after all. Now, there we are, then. No problem. Another satisfied... Co Admiration of truly of the art. What for? For his native wit and cunning. I believe anybody who avoids wedlock all his life is deserving of the highest respect. Oh, I found wedlock very confusing. But your marriage can't have been all that bad. Not at first. It was fine while they were taking the photographs. <laughs> it was only after that it was all downhill. <laughs> you think I can get some sleep now? Oh, well, there's nothing stopping you. Get into bed. You're going to make notes all night. Why are you so argumentative? I only asked. It's because you're wearing a suit tomorrow, isn't it? You're always nervous the night before. I shan't be able to breathe. They never fit. Well, that's because you're so used to those baggy overalls. I don't know what you want with an old shed when you've all that space in your overalls. It serves you right if I turn purple. You'd better not. It'll clash with my outfit. <laughs> I'll go and see what it is. He seems a better class of solicitor. <laughs> that was the former Mrs. Trulo. <laughs> As you can see, we still converse freely. She sends her love and best wishes for the future. Is there going to be any future? What are we going to do now? Well, there's only one thing we can do. We've got to face him with the bride. Let him tell her himself that he's backing out. Oh, I couldn't do that. Why not? Well, it's unlucky to see the bride on the day of the wedding. <laughs> Little bit superstitious, are we, lad? Oh, what's wrong with that? Nothing, nothing. I'm a little bit that way myself. 
I've always thought it was supernatural aid that helped me catch the Hackney killer. <laughs> Remind me to tell you about it sometime. So, little superstitious person, <laughs> what if we brought you a gypsy to tell your fortune? What if the gypsy was able to put your mind at rest about your future? gave it to Mr. Dewhurst. Oh. Mr. Dewhurst suggested that I give it to somebody responsible for safekeeping. I think Mr. Dewhurst was very wise. Well, you better get dressed and go and fetch it. Yeah, I, I, I will. I will. And maybe at home, Mr. Dewhurst will have some alligator liver extract. <laughs> You'll be here on the wedding morning. I have to have a quick tinker to calm my nerves. What are you nervous about? I hate getting dressed up. Is everything all right? Yes, everything's fine. Of course, he could be lying. <laughs> Where's the groom? Oh, he's in jail. I see what you mean about everything being all right. <laughs> What's he doing in jail? Let us look after him until he sobers up. Don't worry, we'll get him there on time. In what condition? Oh, well, if there's going to be picky. Oh. Oh, Why don't you wear gloves, Smiler, like anybody else? It's a wedding present. Does that come with the vase? <laughs> I can't get my hand out. Foggy has a safe trouble in the pub. <laughs> Could they dribble a drop of oil around the inside, Wesley? I've had strict instructions not to mess with oil. Not this... I'll give way sign thieves. I sell them abroad to poor countries who can't afford their own giveaway sound. Don't believe him. He's an idiot. And what are you? <laughs> We're together. <laughs> You've seen just about everything. Isn't there anything you like? Nothing that really says that's it. You could get you a parrot. <laughs> what exactly did you have in mind, if it's not too optimistic a question? I haven't really decided. I sort of came with an open mind. Open? <laughs> Never seen one as open. What would you buy for a wedding present? Something expensive. <laughs> I don't think I can go as far as expensive. You haven't even gone as far as cheap. <laughs> well, you've seen everything else. You'll have to have the last resort. Last resort? Yes, it's uh, something I keep for these special occasions when all else fails. Now, stay there a minute and don't touch anything. Uh. That's it? A last resort? Why do you call it a last resort? Oh, an old lady has her reasons. I don't like it. You haven't heard the price yet? How much is it? Oh, I've forgotten. Now, the price is on the ticket in the bottom of the vase. <laughs> oh, one thing for sure. Foggy's not listening. And he's not talking, either. I love listening to Foggy when he's not talking. <laughs> I take my hat off to him. He has the admiration of truly of the yard. What for? For his native wit and cunning. I believe anybody who avoids wedlock all his life is deserving of the highest respect. Oh, I found wedlock very confusing. But your marriage can't have been all that bad. Not at first. It was fine while they were taking the photographs. <laughs> it was only after that it was all downhill. <laughs> I can get some sleep now. Well, there's nothing stopping you. Get into bed. You're going to make notes all night. Why are you so argumentative? I only asked. It's because you're wearing a suit tomorrow, isn't it? You're always nervous the night before. I shan't be able to breathe. They never fit. Well, that's because you're so used to those baggy overalls. I don't know what you want with an old shed when you've all that space in your overalls. Serves you right if I turn purple. You'd better not. It'll clash with my outfit. 